carbon removals look at addressing any emission from any time, any place, anywhere, and it's effectively reversing that emission. So in addition to emissions reductions and emissions avoidance, which both are needed at a drastic scale, we also need to remove carbon from the atmosphere to keep within the IPCC safe global warming pathways. So carbon removals do what they say on the tin. They remove carbon from the atmosphere. They do that through a couple of different processes. They either do it chemically or they do it through biology. So they so plants or trees or kelp sucks carbon out of the atmosphere and then they store it somewhere safe. Uh, so they might store it in rocks or they might store it underground in saline aquifers or they might store the, store the carbon in the plants and the trees that captured it in the first place. All the IPCC scenarios that are out there say we need a massive amount of negative emissions by 2050 to bring CO2 levels in the atmosphere back to safe levels. We have about 50 gigatons of annual emissions, so 20 times the whole planet's annual emissions this year will have to go out again beyond 2050. So technical solutions need to make a major contribution to that. Assume that you want this to be to the tune of a few gigatons at least. That means from where we are today in the tune of maybe less than 10 kilotons, we have to scale up massively to beat at that gigaton. On the one hand side, it is the suppliers that we need to supply us with critical components for the plants we like to build. On the other hand, there is the demand side. So we need clients who are the off-takers of the carbon removal certificates that we do produce. Both has to happen at the same time, development at both ends. Frontier, you know, is a great example of this. You know, large companies coming together to make a sizable commitment that really shapes the market. You know, committing a, a billion dollars draws attention. We are going to have to scale the technology that we have today in a way that no other industry has ever done before. That is going to take an enormous amount of creativity and innovation and risk taking. We need to be willing to bet on technologies earlier than we might have in other industries. We need to come up with new financing mechanisms to support those technologies as they go through hypergrowth. And we need to find a way to link financing and customers together. We identified five things that we thought would be particularly important to scale the carbon removals industry. Creating really clear standards, creating a liquid and transparent market, governments making sufficient commitments to carbon removals in their NDCs, and then backing that up with interventions that will support the market. Collaborating between parts of the supply chain to, in order to be able to scale fast, tracking and agreeing what benefits people get as a consequence of engaging with the, uh, with the carbon removals market. Standardization and regulation across the inception of these targets, um, across the quality of these targets, is going to be you know, key to, to build trust and stability in this market. In order to scale, I think what we really need to consider is we need a financeable revenue stream. For direct air capture, these are large-scale infrastructure projects. You're trying to work with financing partners who are used to airports, utilities, so where's that revenue going to come from? Um, what is the reward for cleaning the skies? Today, the carbon removal market is incredibly nascent. We estimate that fewer than 10,000 total tons of permanent carbon removal have been done worldwide. So the market is extremely early. As we look to 2030 and beyond, we need to scale to something on the order of a billion tons a year by 2030 and five to 10 billion tons a year by 2050. Climate scientists tell us that we're going to need billions of tons of this by mid-century, billions of tons per annum. So that's what the industry needs to evolve to. And what does that mean? Effectively, it means hundreds, thousands of large scale plants. Carbon removal has no silver bullet, not one thing that will solve the problem. What we will see in 2030 and even more so going forward is a set of solutions, some being nature based, some being purely technical, others being a mix of the two. And I think that's important to understand that the size of the problem is such that not one single approach alone can do it. We need to have a set of solutions, we need to have a portfolio of solutions to tackle it. Business community, I think, can help in a couple of different ways to scale carbon removals. First of all, Business can buy carbon removals in order to help them get to their net zero goals. The science-based target initiative 
uh, estimates that between 5 and 10% of, of companies' emissions will need to be neutralised with, uh, with carbon removals. So that's one way that, that business can engage with carbon removals. The other is investing. If we believe that we need 4 to 10 gigatons of, uh, of carbon removals by 2050, this is going to be a trillion dollar market per annum in 2050 potentially. And then we all need to work collaboratively with government to make sure that the frameworks are in place that will support the first of a kind projects and also put the regulation in place that will underpin the market and ensure that the standards are there, the market infrastructure is there and there's confidence that will enable the demand to, to flow, the revenue to flow and then suppliers to be able to access both the equity and the debt financing they'll need to get the projects off the ground. A key role the carbon removal community as it exists today is to raise public awareness to be a pioneer of sorts, that the private sector and individuals are moving ahead while societies may be lagging behind. I think when individual companies are thinking about how they can help, um, let's look to the voluntary markets um, for permanent removals. Let's, let's look to these companies to think about the footprint that they're creating and they've created in the past and how can they address that. The importance of, of coalitions here is going to be very strong. So. Um, like you know, any industry that is looking to accelerate quickly, we need clear understanding of you know, what is the buyer looking for and at what time scale. We need help in uh, building the market, in sort of uh, getting long-term durable offtakes for the products that we produce. Uh, we need help in sort of financing with a risk appetite to build these products. We need more people to join the industry. <laughs>2. We get to see carbon removal in the broader context of what needs to happen in order to get to net zero, so both on the decarbonization side and on the carbon removal side. There's a lot to learn from each of these industries as we go through scaling, and so there's a lot of benefit for being together. This is actually a quite interesting meetup of people from a variety of industries and backgrounds, and it's important that that network is being fostered. You can't do it alone. You have to work in ecosystems, I'd almost say, around carbon removal. I think by bringing the different businesses together, you are cross-pollinating ideas and the ability to swap ideas with um, tangential ideas, but all focused on green, has, has been really, really powerful. There are really kind of three standout points for, for me. One is really the importance of, of education in this space, so of explaining clearly you know, how these technologies work. That's going to be key for investors to put up financing, for um, you know, underwriters to you know, feel comfortable taking on the risk to ensure these technologies, uh, for talent to you know, understand what they need to study, you know, how they can make an impact in, in this space. Uh, the second uh, is, is really that systems level uh, challenges really need systems level solutions. So we've heard a lot about entrepreneurs you know, thinking carefully about the secondary impacts that their technology will have. And finally, um, you know, I think it's actually regulation as an unlock rather than red tape. That's what we hoped for with this conference, that we would enable these unusual connections to identify new opportunities that we haven't thought of so far to be able to scale these climate technologies as fast as we need and to recommit ourselves and re-amp up our ambitions that we can do this. We can do this because we can see the possibility and we're doing it together and we can do this because frankly we have to.